Have you guys noticed how the ads that we're seeing online these days are becoming more and more relevant? Let me give you an example. So I was online the other day writing an essay. And like any good student, I procrastinated on it all weekend. So it's about 1 a.m. I'm not really in my right mind. So I decide, hey, screw this. I'll drop out of school and become a professional swimmer. So I go online to the USA Swimming website. But I notice that the times are way too fast. So I'm thinking, yeah, I should probably stay in school. Back to the essay website. And notice how the ads have changed from being generic to swimmer themed. This isn't a coincidence. It's because online marketers are selling your data from the websites that you use. What is data? Data can mean a lot of things, but when I talk about it here today, I just mean any information that's been collected about a user. So how does this process of online marketing normally work? Well, as I said before, as you use your phone and computer normally, websites will sell this data to online marketers. These online marketers are able to analyze this data and make inferences about it to build your user profile. Now, your user profile can include things like your age, your gender, your hobbies and interests, and your income level. Next, businesses will buy these user profiles to see who fits in their target market and who does not. If you do fit in their target market, you may see their ads pop up on your phone or computer screen. Now, this is a really great thing for businesses because they don't waste their advertising budget on people outside of their target market. So for example, MDEN doesn't waste money advertising to gross Ohio State alumni. And on the other end of things, consumers see ads that are more relevant to them. So it's great for that too. Now the majority of the time, this is it. This is as far as online marketing goes. And again, it's a really great thing for businesses. In the past, they've been forced to use very generalized marketing tactics, like putting up a billboard. But with online marketing, it's like everyone gets their own personalized billboard. Unfortunately, the collection of data and online marketing can enable some unethical practices. The worst of which, I think, is demographic pricing. Now, what is demographic pricing? It's really every marketer's dream come true. It's selling based on what people are willing to pay. So if you're willing to pay more, these online marketers are going to charge you more. This isn't very easy to accomplish in in-store retail, but it's incredibly easy to do online. When a consumer goes online shopping, they assume that they're seeing the exact same web page as everyone else. Unfortunately, this isn't the case. Oftentimes, the merchandise available, and more importantly, the price of the merchandise available, will vary from user to user. Allow me to give you an example. So let's say that I just book a nice, normal vacation online. And then I decide I want a new pair of flip-flops for my lake trip, and they cost $30, and I think that's a fair price, so I buy them. All right, next, my friend, who is much more wealthy than I am, books a really nice vacation to the beach. Now, this is very lavish, and because she booked this vacation online, the online marketers have assumed that this person has a lot of money. So if she went to go buy the exact same pair of flip-flops, they would cost $60 for her. But of course, the online marketers were right. She thought this was a fair price, and she buys them. Now, as you can see with demographic pricing, sometimes you're going to be getting a better deal with someone else. It'll work out in your favor. But most of the time, the big companies are going to win and you are going to get ripped off. And I wish the solution was as simple as let's not shop online anymore. But unfortunately, there's a bunch of really creepy things that online marketers can do to you. From using the location service data from your smartphone, malls can pinpoint your exact location very precisely, even as precisely as your location in a mall. And they can send you promotions very precisely based on businesses that you are near. So to me, this is very evasive, especially because it's happening with normal, anonymous internet use. What would happen if we were deliberately putting public information about ourselves online, like with social media? Well, on the more ethical side of things, companies are going to be monitoring what you say about them on social media. So for example, if you tweet, at Jimmy John's super slow delivery today, they might read this tweet and make steps to improve in the future. But of course, there are a less ethical side of things when you combine online marketing, social media, and data usage. A recent study showed that models in advertisements that look similar to a user will be found more likable to a user. So subconsciously, when you see an ad and that model looks a little bit like you, you find this ad more likable. Utilizing this, their data that they've collected from social media, which includes your profile pictures, Marketers are able to layer their advertisements with your profile pictures to make you like their ad more. Now, it's not anything that you would notice, but subconsciously, you are liking these advertisements more. 
Now, to me, this is very invasive. It's like they're using my photo in an advertisement, and I don't feel like I gave them my consent to do so. How are they getting away with this? Well, it's in the privacy policy. Now, you see this privacy policy link on every website you go to, and you assume, great, they have a privacy policy, a policy of privacy. They're really looking out for me, the consumer, and my best interest, right? Wrong. You see, with privacy, companies do not want you to click on this link. If you do click on this link, they have another barrier in place. It's going to be 400 pages of legal jargon that you're not going to want to read through. If you did click on this privacy policy, however, you would read things like, by using this website, you give us our, your consent to sell your information to X, Y, and Z online marketers. They're allowed to do whatever they want with it. So what can you, the consumer, do to protect yourself? Well, you might be thinking, I'll just go straight to the source of the problem. I'll stop using websites that sell my data. Well, if you're trying to do that, I wish you luck. The thing is, every website sells your data. Every search engine, every social media website, every weather site, every news outlet, every website is selling your data. Now, the reason why is simple. Think about it. These websites are completely free to use, and they hardly have any advertisements on them. How are they really making their money? They're selling your data. That's how it works. The only website that I can find that does not sell your data is Wikipedia. So if you are trying to you know, avoid every website besides Wikipedia, I really wish you luck. <laughs> what can you, the consumer, really do to be protected from online marketing? The only way I can recommend that you be fully protected from online marketing is just give up on society and move to the woods. But don't actually do that. Just keep in mind that these companies are only selling your data to make money. They have to turn a profit to keep their websites going. They don't intend for your data to be used in malicious ways, such as demographic pricing. With more consumer awareness, companies could offer paid, or websites, excuse me, could offer paid versions of themselves that wouldn't sell your data. So for example, you could use a paid version of Facebook for $1 a month, and they wouldn't sell your data. With even more consumer awareness, we could force these companies to change their privacy policies to protect us from unethical data usage. But unfortunately, these solutions are a long ways away because no one really knows about this problem. So all I ask is consumers, please be aware. Thank you.